This is something I've wanted to make for ages and with the help of this machine here, I've managed to finally complete it. And as you can see, it looks absolutely glorious on my wall. But today I'm gonna try and cover in as much detail as I can on how I made this glorious looking sign. It is very simple to do. And if you take out like the drying times of like glue and paint and stuff like that, it probably only takes about an hour to make. And if you check these type of signs out on Etsy, they do sell for quite a bit. So stick around then guys, if you do want to find out how to make your own sign like this. Don't forget to like the video. And if you're not already, subscribe. And I do hope you enjoy the video. But before I get into the video, I'd like to thank this video sponsor, which is Omtech. Now, this video would not be possible without using this machine here. I used this machine to cut out everything from this video, from the cardboard to the three mil black lettering on the back, the gold acrylic, the white acrylic, and the red acrylic. All of that was done with this machine. So again, massive thanks to Omtech for sponsoring this video. I'll put a link down in the description if you want to check them out. And at the time of recording this video, they do have a pretty decent sale on, but I do also have my own promotion code, which will give you an extra percentage off. Again, that'll be down below in the description. So don't forget to use that when you do purchase one of these machines. So thank you very much, Omtech. Now let's get back into the video. So let's have a look then how we did this from start to end. So as you can see, I'm laying these pine strips out. I've cut these out on a chop saw, all exactly the same size, and I'm laying them down just to dry fit at the moment on top of a piece of hardwood, just to make sure everything fits and everything looks as it should. And once I'm happy, I've got enough strips and everything goes together as it should. What I'll do then, I'll take these out and I'll just sand all the edges on these. I just wanted a very slight round on the top edges of all of these strips. It would have been much easier to do with like a router table, but unfortunately I haven't got one. So I did all these strips by hand. So with all these strips cut out and with the edges sanded, I'm ready to start gluing. I'm just using a standard cheap wood glue. And all I'm doing is putting a fair amount of wood glue on the back of each one of these strips and then just making sure I'm putting them all down in the correct pattern. Because with this herringbone pattern, you can sometimes put them in the wrong place, trust me I know, and if one goes in the wrong place, it can mess up everything that goes after it. But I already made that mistake once, so I wasn't going to make it again, and especially when I'm gluing them all down to the board, we don't want to get all the way to the end and realise we've actually messed up. So if you are going to go with this pattern, again, make sure you are just taking your time and getting everything put in place before you do start gluing. So once everything's glued down, I put a big weight on it and I let it set for about an hour. And once I was happy, everything was stuck down. I've just got a small foam roller and then we got some mahogany wood stain. Just poured a fair amount over the top and I'll just roll it in. Now this didn't take too long at all. I did do a couple of coats on this just to make sure we got every single nook and cranny and just to make sure we got a very nice deep finish on it. And then once we've stained it, we've let that dry again for a few more hours. We just need to now cut off the excess. The one problem with doing the heron pattern is there is quite a lot of waste with it. As you can see with the edges I'm cutting off here, because the way you lay it, you do need to go over the edge by quite a bit. So that's all I'm doing here. I'm just using a jigsaw and I'm just following the line of that backboard. And we're just running the straightest cut we can. I'm not being too careful with it because we are going to be framing over the top of the edge. But yeah, just trying to get that straightest cut you can. We do sand it afterwards anyway. And we do this with all four sides, making sure we can get the neatest finish on it as we can. And like I said, just follow that line, making sure you're cutting as close to it as you can. Try not to go over it too much. Because like I said, even though we are going to be using a frame to cover it up, there's only so much give you can really have with it. If you go too deep or too shallow, again, that can stick out with the frame. And once we've done all the cutting, it's just now getting the sand out, just sanding the edge, making sure there's no sharp bits or anything like that, nothing we want to cause splinters. Now I know I should have probably cut it and sanded before doing any staining, 
but I did go after and do a couple more coats of the stain on top afterwards. So there's no harm done, but I will remember the next time I won't do any of the staining until I've cut and sanded everything down. Right, so I got all the files ready to go. That's going to be cut out in the gold text ready in Lightburn. This is gold metallic acrylic. Now, it's not the cheapest stuff, so I need to make sure I get this done. Hopefully right the first time. I've never actually cut this stuff out with the Omtech Polar. Now, it shouldn't be too hard, but what I'm going to do is run a very quick test circle. Say, so let's just cut out one there with the same settings. So we're going to go 20 millimeters a second. I'll take that down a little bit just in case. 18 millimeters a second at 65% power. And we'll run that and hopefully that should cut out first time. So let's test. I think that is done. Yeah, we can see that has dropped out. So uh, we can see that has cut that out without a single bit of problem. I can probably go faster with a lower power, but that is fast enough. I don't want to introduce any extra wobble or anything like that. So we'll run these letters now and then we'll run the backside of these and what they're going to get stuck onto. So once this part's done, I've got the back parts for the lettering drying outside. So then I'll glue them in place. We've still got the red acrylic to cut for the YouTube play button. And then I'm probably going to cut out some cardboard as a template so I know exactly where to put everything. Right, because this project is quite a big one and where the pieces need to be glued in place need to be quite precise, I decided I'm going to use some three millimeter cardboard, which Omtech have actually provided me, to cut out a template to hopefully fit in the one corner and then all the pieces should be able to go in place then. Fingers crossed. I've never cut out cardboard before, but with how easy this machine is just flying through any material, we're going to set it up to all run as much as we can off one sheet. If we need to run two sheets, we will. So we've just cut out this template now. This is just out of a thin piece of cardboard. So I'm just going to be using this to wedge right into the top corner of the frame. And as you can see now, we can get the letters we've already cut out and we can just fit them in place. Just doing a quick dry fit at the moment, just to make sure everything goes in place where it should and nothing's too snug. because so you don't want to be gluing these down and then accidentally gluing them either to the cardboard or accidentally gluing the cardboard down as well. That's fine. So yeah, let's just go bit of wood glue on each letter. 
It shouldn't need too much because it is just thin three millimeter plywood. We just want to make sure that we're not sticking it to the cardboard because obviously we're going to want to pull the cardboard away once we're done. Again, we're not going to need the loads. Just enough so everything is covered. And again, once we stuck it all down, we're going to move the cardboard just to make sure the cardboard is not getting stuck down and then put it back in place. I am now ready to start with the super glue. Now the super glue is a lot less forgiving than it is with the wood glue because it can set pretty quick. So when you stick these down, put them in place, you do kind of need to get it in the exact place the very first time because you've only got a couple of seconds to move it before it does set and you can pull it off, but you are risking damaging either the acrylic or the wood or even both. So when you're gluing it down, just be extra careful. And once we finish gluing everything down and everything set, it's time to do the peeling. This is just peeling off all the protective film I leave on my acrylic. As you can see, we've done the red acrylic first, and now we're just doing all the pieces of the gold acrylic. 